live for and tonight I am really excited to introduce you to Emily and Lenny Sabino and uh, the way we connected a friend of a mutual friend sent me sent me your music oh that's how it all went okay. yeah sent me your 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 uh, website mm -hmm. and I clicked on a song and it was amazing because it had a lot of the what I've learned now South South American influence. Your your voice was the voice on it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have got to meet these people because it the music. It, I was thinking about this on the drive up for the interview. It went right to my heart, you know, and I could feel it inside. Most music probably sits here with me and. Reggae, I'll, I'll feel reggae in my heart, but your music just went right to my heart. So that's why I wanted to have this opportunity and I'm really, really grateful to introduce you to our audience and to learn a little bit more about your story because it is a pretty cool story about how you guys met and how you're making music. And um, So again, thank you for being here. Thank you for interviewing us. It's our pleasure. <laughs> so Lenny, you're from Peru. Uh, yes, I'm original from Peru. Right. Yes. And Emily, you're from? No, I was born in New Hampshire and then, you know, a New England person, you know. Okay. So <laughs> the, the first question is, how does a Peruvian and a New Englander, how do you, how did you guys connect? Uh, well, I can tell the first part, you know. Uh, I was a uh, uh, part of a, a Peruvian band, like international Peruvian band. Uh, who does uh, uh, traditional music, you know, from the Andes. Uh, Mods, you know, we use uh, pan flutes, you know, charango, right. guitars, uh, bombo, we call big, you know, the big earth drum, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was part of the, the band, uh, the name was Inca Suasi, and I had the opportunity to, to, uh, to come to this, this country. And, and after months, I I was uh, performing at the Berkeley uh, College of Music for the summer um, concerts. You know, international uh, bands came to for this. I think this uh, is about a week. Not many bands performing over there, and that does. And then when I meet Emily in one of the concerts I, I had over there in Boston, yeah. Yeah, so I was given a ticket to go for free, and that's a whole other story, but bottom line, I got there a little bit late <laughs> without my glasses, and um, so I'm hearing this amazing music that's really just kind of doing to me what our music was kind of doing for you. It's like, wow, what is this? And so I can see that there's people playing, but I can't really actually see who they are because I don't have my glasses on. And then after the performance, the guy that gave me the ticket said, you want to go backstage and meet the musicians? And I said, yeah. So I go back with, with one of my CDs, um, or from my first, my individual solo CD. And uh, I go backstage and I'm talking with Lane and I'm saying, wow, I love your music. And he's kind of nodding and smiling and that's about it. And I say, do you want to copy my CD? And he's nodding. So I hand him that. And um, I think, wow, he's a man of few words. And so... I leave and I'm like, okay, that's that. And about a week later, I bumped into him in Harvard Square. And I said, hey, you're from that band, you know? And then it turns out that I learned that he didn't speak any English. So <laughs> I said, that's okay, because about three weeks uh, before we met, or uh, excuse me, about three months before we met, I started taking Spanish lessons again and remembering the Spanish that I picked up when I was younger. And I just had this overwhelming urge at that time to learn to become fluent in Spanish. And so I thought, oh, what I really need is to meet somebody that doesn't speak any English. And at the same time, I had this thought, like, I really need a new musical partner. And so anyway, yeah, we started doing music together and uh, in Spanish. And then, um, uh, you know, eventually it sort of we married our musical styles together and we got married ourselves. So, yeah, but that's how it all started. How long was that process of... Uh, getting to know each other and then getting married and, and you know, bringing the music together. Three years. Yeah. So, uh, would you say, because we weren't really dating in a normal sense. We, we kind of were like m musical friends. friends. And I mean, there was definitely something 
very deep there. I, I felt like Lenin understood me even when he wouldn't understand the lyrics I was writing in English. He understood what I was trying to get at on a heart level. Nobody else had gotten that. So. Yeah, and the, and the first album that she had, you know, she was working on the second, on the first album from yeah. the Flying Seeds. And I didn't entertain any of, you know, maybe a couple words from the from each song that she was writing. And just follow the melody, you know. I, I, I did arrangements and put some instruments, flutes, charango, guitars. And that was, you know, I didn't entertain really in the beginning. It's what now I can entertain more when I watch the song about, you know. Right. But you yeah. could feel it. You, yeah, exactly. You understand the words, but you could feel yeah. it. Yeah. 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 It was like he took these ideas that I had and he made them multi dimensional because I think I, I was more like a bouillon songwriter. So um, they were like really interesting ideas, but they weren't fully fleshed out. And Lenin came along and it was like, uh, let's just add this and this. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, wow. So. Yeah, it was really a, a, a gift in many ways to have met Lenny. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, just out of curiosity, because I love to hear stories about how people met and, and started dating, but you, you did you have to keep traveling? And how did you guys keep in touch? Or were your traveling done then? Or? Well, I was uh, performing. Uh, yeah, up and down the East Coast. From, East Coast. Yeah, exactly. From from Florida to, to uh, Canada. Canada, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so he was traveling. And yeah, I mean, it's, you know, how musicians live like, like that, you know, it's never, you have time, always you're traveling. And, but I talk, you know, many times with Emily too, and because uh, I was good to talk with her, you know? Right. And, and uh, when I was, in Boston, you know, now some days I I had to record with her, you know, do some part, little part, and that's why we we did slow, you know, little part, you know, each month, you know, then that's why it takes so long to finish the album is because I didn't have the full time to to put, you know, into the the album. Uh, yeah, because you never knew your schedule. See, so the thing is, he would he would. They would get sent places and so sometimes he, he would be home like well home whatever in boston he would be around for like four or five days and we wouldn't know it would just be like he'd be over for one day and we just like kind of do a whole bunch of stuff i like clean my whole apartment before he'd come over <laughs> and then we'd start doing music stuff and you know it'd become kind of this whole wreck but we just keep working working and it's like well can you stay another day i don't know i don't know and you know then stay a few more days and other times it'd be like no i gotta go and so we just didn't know Right. So it was a little bit like adapt to the situation. Exactly. Yeah. So speaking of adapting, you had to adapt, or you really had to pick your Spanish up. Yeah. You know, and, and so you've learned, back then you had to learn how to communicate in, in that language. Yeah. But what about culturally? You know, an American and Peruvian cultures, bringing those cultures together, and also musically. Was was there a difference in the music? There, oh, I mean, yes. there had to be, yes. right? Because your music is uh, I... much more rhythmically complex. Peruvian uh, music is so much more complex. Or the Latin music, yeah, Latin. Yeah, but we have more. Uh, we have a traditional rhythm too in my country. Yeah. Um, so how did you guys work through that? How did you bring? You know, how did you work? <laughs> how, do you, how do you work the cultural difference and the musical difference? Well, um, it took time. It's it's a process. Took time. She had to learn, and I had to learn some a little bit more of that. This kind of music that people does here, and you know, it's learning. It's you have to learn. If you wanna work with with somebody, you have to learn, you know, a lot a lot, a lot about this culture, you know, about this music from this country. And, and she had to learn, she had to listen music from the country too, you know, right. to go into that, what's, what's, you know, about that. Yeah. I think it just takes time, because um, at first I thought I'm never going to get these rhythms. And if we're talking about music and rhythms, you can kind of apply it to all things, whether it's like how uh, each person's family understands life, the worldview, all these things. And so it just, it's like you think you're not going to get it, you think you're not going to get it, and then one day you start to kind of, Feel the rhythm the right way, 
But I think it was, um, it kind of felt like I became, at least from my perspective, I feel like I'm becoming more of a whole person as a result of knowing Lenin and his family and how they understand things and how, how the music is, you know, how different rhythms work, all that. Yeah, so it's... But it, it, it took a while, and sometimes it was kind of frustrating, because I'm like, whoa, and then it's like, whoa, wait, 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 how I feel isn't the only way to feel about things. Right. Yeah. So you were in the United States at the time, so at some point, you must have gone to Peru. Yeah. And I'm wondering how that helped you with um, having it, having the understanding go deeper, maybe, or, or more complete, or... Yeah, that's a good question. Um... I, well, okay, before we got married, I went to Ecuador by myself uh, uh, for a little while, um, when we were still kind of more in the friends thing, so I thought, oh, I'll go down there and see who, what other kind of musicians I can meet, and I met some really cool musicians, but nobody liked Lenny, so I came back, and I'm like, this is easy, I, you know, I like this person, <laughs> and I like his music, but, um, but I think going to Ecuador actually really helped me alone. It helped me understand Lenin better because when I was there, nothing is the same. Kind of you go and 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 like the food's different, how you prepare it's different, the altitude is different, so you feel different. The mountains have a certain feel to them. Nothing's the same. I had to kind of I felt a little helpless actually, and you also kind of feel. I mean, I was just there for like two months, but it was long enough to realize. Wow, so this is what it feels like to go someplace on your own because he's the first one in his family to, to come to the U.S. And, and I mean, very brave to do that. And, and you came originally for a year and then you renewed your contract. So you got to go uh -huh. home for a month or two and then you were here for another whole year. I mean, and so it kind of helped me understand a lot and I think be more open to, to learning. Yeah. I, I, would, I would say you both had courage. <laughs> but so where where does your courage come from? Where did what where did the courage come from for you to leave your family to be that first person and to travel for a year and then a second year? Well, uh, always I had um, big decisions in my life, and travel to this country was a big decision for me because I had to leave my family. And, you know, I always, you know, with my family, any parties, any, you know, reunions, I was part of them, really, really close to them, with my mom, my brothers. And that took me so, you know, long to, to feel, you know, different. But at this time, I don't feel the same thing, you know. It's, I, I have my feelings here because part of me is here, but... The other part is over there because you know it's but, my, my blood and everything. But and, you you came for opportunity. You came for and yeah job yeah and I that was yeah. I came for I was looking for opportunity to to travel to make music and that's why I say yes okay I'm, I wanna go where I have to sign. <laughs> that's and, awesome. Yes. And did your did your family um, say okay go? Or was it hard for them? Well, in the beginning, they they yeah, they they have you know bad feelings, you know, because they have to leave me go. But uh, they understand. Well, he's he's the fifth of six kids yeah. too. So you know, um, by the time you get to child number five or six, probably. Uh, like your older brothers were like a, a veterinarian, you know, an accountant and stuff. And so Lenin came along and his mom always had a love of music. And so, you know, in a way, Lenin's doing something that, that I think his mom values a lot, which is music, right. something special. So, Did you grow up playing music? Had you had music your entire yes, life? Yes, yes. In the school, you know, uh, with uh, my friends. Um, just for fun, you know, they, they bring instruments like these flutes, you know, you can see them, you know, and guitars, sometimes um, like 20 people. 20 people, 18 people in the little room, you know, <laughs> and everybody playing like, you know. <laughs> wow, sounds like fun. Exactly. <laughs> and my mom always was with me because she was, you know, taking care of everybody because she feel, she feel like everybody's 
her kids, you know, like little boys. And I appreciate a lot of that. And I had a lot of help from, from her, yeah. So is she one of your um, teachers of, your mom taught you love, it sounds like. Yeah. Right. She has a special, I think she has a special connection with you. I mean, she has a special connection with all of her kids, but there's, I'm just saying, in addition, not, not to diminish anything with any other child, but I'm just saying that I think she's got a special connection with Lenny. The I music. feel that. It's, it's more than just the music, but it's also the music. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, and were you, did you grow up playing or being involved? With music as well, or? in a different way, in a, in a kind of a silly way, really, because I, I always um, wrote songs with my cousins. So I have recordings from when I was like ten years old, writing little short snippet songs that that we did together. And um, so it was always a dream of mine to sing, you know. Um, and then I got classical training later, but like after I went to a regular college kind of a thing, and then after that I did about five years of classical training. So, but yeah, I, I never wanted to be an opera singer or anything like that. It seemed kind of too formal. <laughs> right. So. So uh, let's kind of fast forward to today. So your work together is under the, the, the label or the group name Flying. The Flying Seeds. Fly, the Flying yep. Seeds. And so what, what kind of music is that? Can you describe that a little bit to, to our audience? Well, we've called it Andy and New England Nature and Love Music, which is kind of a long handle for yeah, it. Yeah, so repeat that again. Andy and New England Nature and Love Music. So, um, yeah, it's it's a fusion of, of styles. It's it's basically uh, Lenny's and my musical backgrounds put together. Um, yeah, that's basically what it is. So. And. If I understand it correctly, it really is the two of you doing this, but when you listen to the music, there are multiple instruments, and that's that's you, right? You're playing different tracks and bringing them together? Yeah, most of the instruments I play, yeah. But uh, we had some, another uh, musician friend who records us, like the drummer, you know? Uh, but most of the tracks I recorded, yeah. Yeah, if, I mean, if we were, <laughs> I had thought it'd be kind of funny to have a, I mean, we're not really going to do this, but, you know, to have some picture of a bunch of musicians, but it's like Lenny's head on all these different <laughs> people because he so, plays so many instruments and, you know, when you get a, a cool idea, you know, and it's like some odd hour, he can just go right and, and record it right then. So, you know, it's kind of handy to be able to do all that. Yeah, the, our music has a lot of parts, little parts, instruments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes I had to learn, you know, my own <laughs> music, right? Because uh, it was you know, a lot of tracks, and it's difficult to, you know, to put in my brain everything when I had to perform live. So I had to learn one more time, you know. It's how, how does the creative process work for both of you? How how does a song come about? You know, I think sometimes we write stuff together, just but um, a lot of times we'll do things on our own. We'll get ideas ourselves, and then we'll bring the idea, you know, to one another and kind of present it that way. So yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I think it's more like that, and then kind of our synastry is is kind of figuring out how to put the whole thing together after maybe the usually after the initial idea has kind of been born from one of us. Yeah. Occasionally we write stuff together, but yeah. Yeah. To, to, to make this happen, do you, do you set aside a certain segment of time every day and say, this is our, our time together to create music? Or is it really a, an independent process and you, when you get together, you get together? Or? Well, we're, we're living you, together, so. Right. right. <laughs> I think the second. Yeah, it's yeah. more organic, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So after, like tonight after dinner, when I showed up, you guys were working on. Yeah, we're working on a, a new song. song. Together. Yep. Yeah. 
Yep, and that was one that Lenny, uh, well, let's see, you kind of wrote that while I was sitting there, and you said, here, play these chords for me, and so I was kind of like the person, you chunk a chunk a chunk, and he's like, dude, the whole thing just spilled out, and then it's been uh, several days that uh, we've been <laughs> <laughs> kind of like, uh, you know, trying to figure out what is the right, um, what is the right rhythm that goes with this, what, how do we want it to Feel, you know because it's definitely a heart song so you can do heart songs in a lot of ways you can have like it can hit you like this or it can be kind of angelic and feel like whew. so we've been in that process of, of figuring that out yeah what what's your vision what is what's I mean I feel like asking you know how do you want your music out there you 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 clearly want to put your music out there what's behind that that's a good question too um, you want to start the answer to that one? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there is uh, a space for any musician. Oh. And on my case, I, I want, you know, I want to read music. I'm doing music because I like to do And it's part of me. And Maybe not everybody is gonna feel into the words of my music, but there's some people who are gonna take personal my songs, our songs, and I like that, you know? It's more personal for me. Yeah, I would say too, we're, we're people of faith, you know, like, uh, um, and, and so some of this is like, we want to put some positive feeling out there that, that, um, some music, like you were saying before, is kind of head music. You sort of sense it from here up and other music you kind of take in and it's like, Ooh, you can really feel it. And so I feel like part of it is we believe in, in people being ultimately good underneath it all. And we want to encourage good, positive feelings and, and the ability to listen to something and, and it inspire you to, to have faith in yourself and in the world, you know, so it kind of, part of that influence is, is um, my interest in, in healing and, um, and Lenny's, I think, interest in uh, being a good person and, and living well and encouraging that, yeah, so. I really appreciate you sharing that because that's very much similar to what To Live For is about. It's about inspiring love, joy, and positive vibes. That's exactly. See, that's a great way to put it. Yeah. That's I mean, our mantra. All can, right. I'm not going to take. It. I'm not going to take your <laughs> mantra, but yeah. In other words, yeah, it's it's to be a, a force of good or a, or an encourager of, of goodness in the world, or maybe good is kind of a minute, but a positive a positive vibration, you know. Yeah, but a right? vibration, absolutely. Yeah. So. Where did that come from? From both of you. You know, where did you learn to want to live in a place of good and to just put out goodness and positive vibration? You know, is it from your mom or is it from your family? Is it, in, in your case, I mean, you know, you just felt good. That's how, you know, like you when, you're, when you're little kid and um you know i remember sitting on a rock and feeling how good the rock felt and there's a tree overhead and i could feel the tree and it was like communing with all this and it's like wow this is great you know and so this was natural to me to just to be able to sit there and and feel nature just in a beautiful harmony so um uh, i guess I love expressing that and so you know I felt a need to express it I'm not really happy unless I'm expressing something or helping other people connect to how good that feels if I'm not doing one of those two things on a regular basis I start getting really sad mm -hmm. so part of it's selfish I, I love to feel good <laughs> so it's like here let me share this with you or here let me express this but maybe what do you think Lenny what motivates you to want to do, you know, because I mean, we could do any kind of music, but we, we like doing stuff that has a good message, right? Well, uh, I like to do always I did music like, like that, because I want to, I want the people feel, you know, heart connection with, with other people. 
to share each other and love each other, you know. And I think people has to stop hurting each other. Seriously. So and I want you know I want a I want a peaceful you know war. And I know it's difficult, but I have to do something with my <laughs> little music. And <laughs> and you know maybe maybe uh, there's another musician or person is doing the same thing like I'm doing in music. But that's my principal, you know, um, reason why I do music. It's I enjoy doing, and I want the people, uh, you know, feeling what I'm doing, you know, into the music. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, and if somebody gets something out of the fact that we're from two different, you know, cultures, and we're kind of merging that in an interesting way, excellent, you know, because that's that's kind of cool too. I mean, it wasn't like oh, this is my list and I need to have, but it just kind of worked out that way, so, yeah. We, and we support you in that we, there is so much negativity in the world and, and there's a lot of challenging situations in the world, but we're, we're with you on that. We just feel that this is something that can help balance that, even though yeah. it's a little bit. It, your music sends vibes out there. It makes a difference. It does make me happy because I think I'm doing, I'm in the right track, you know? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So the Flying Seeds is, you're here in Maine. You're going to go to Peru for a month in, in December, January. Yeah. But how can people listen to you or learn more about you? Uh, they can go to our website, which is www.theflyingseeds.com, or they can check us out on YouTube because we have some videos there. We're on Facebook, but not quite as much. So, I mean, we, we're on there too. So any of those, any of those three will, will do the trick. You'll find us. <laughs> you can just Google us too, The Flying Seeds, because we're there. Is there any significance to the name The Flying Seeds? Yeah. Um... That was, that story is that we were sitting, we were living in East Boston at the time. We had this third floor apartment, which never do that if you're a musician, because then you're lugging all this gear up and down and it feels like you're moving your entire <laughs> life every time you have a performance. If you see the drum, we carry it. Oh, oh man, we had another that. one that's even bigger and we carried that up and down too. And I mean, I think we're paying for it, we're and paid for it. But anyway, so we were sitting there and... Um, uh, you know, we were trying to find a band name because our first performances, we just were known as Lenny and Emily because we didn't have a name. And um, so anyway, for about six months must have gone by and every day I'd be like, what am I going to name the band? And finally one day I asked that question. Right when I asked it, there was this breeze that blew through our window and a little floating seed came blowing in and hovered right in front of my face right when I'm asking the question. And I'm like, okay. Like, hello, little seed. And um, so then I thought, hey, I know, let's call ourselves the Flying Seeds. But I didn't... Milkweed. Yeah, it was a milkweed is what it was. And, you know, like, whatever. In the spring, I was meandering on down um, uh, near the water there in East Boston. And I found a little plant. I'm like, that's the seed right there. I'm like, oh, milkweed. I always loved that as a child. I didn't even remember. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it has a nice, uh, a nice feel to it to me because it's, you know floating things, traveling, all that, yeah, planting seeds, you know. It's, uh, the, the seed showing up is synchronistic, mm -hmm. uh, but your story is synchronistic too, because you, a couple months before meeting Lenny, had just decided to get back into Spanish. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and, and in an obsessive way, not right. normal, like I'm usually not quite that focused, but this was just an absolute total obsession like drop everything and learn spanish it really was like that and, so. and the way you got the ticket and yes and so my feeling is you know you guys were destined to meet but to me your music in itself is a destination and it's it has a destiny to go out to ever to other people it really is music that's to live for oh thank you, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> um,
porque tú has llenado Thank you.